Our first presenter today is a local speaker. Her name is Brenda Kindle. Brenda is a graduate of the 2009 inaugural class of the Master of Arts in Catholic Studies from Christian Brothers University. She is currently the lay director for the Memphis Curcio Movement. She's been a campus minister for the University of Memphis and was the first Catholic women rector for Memphis Cairo's prison ministry. Brenda and her husband Juan have been married for 38 years. They are active parishioners at Holy Spirit Parish. They have four daughters and two granddaughters. Her husband Juan and her son-in-law Michael Abshire were instrumental in the first men's morning spirituality and the first Fishers of Men's group. <coughs> Brenda today is going to share with us how she journeyed back to her Catholic faith by asking, seeking, and not. Please welcome Brenda Kittle. Adrian was born in 1977. 
We wanted more children. And after a miscarriage in two months, I carried Jennifer full term in 1979. I had a four-month miscarriage two years later. But she became pregnant soon after with twins. Katie and Sarah were born in 1984. I can now say I have four angels on earth and four angels already in heaven. As the girls got older, we saw other parents taking their children to church on Sundays. We started going to church too. You could say that our children gave us our faith lift. When I rediscovered my faith, I found myself making good decisions. Soon I noticed that my two brothers and five sisters seemed to come to me for advice. All of a sudden, I was the spiritual leader of the family because my prayer warrior mom was beginning to slip into Alzheimer's disease. My faith blossomed when I made a three-day COVID in 1993. I became aware that Christ wanted me to be his disciple, and that discipleship should start in my own environment. So, in order to bloom where we are planted, Juan and I continue to raise our family in our Catholic faith. We have been raised in our faith, so we wanted to pass it forward. I also realized that I needed to pass it backwards, too. What do I mean by that? Well, in the 1970s, I was not the only one who left the church. As I mentioned before, my father suffered from mental illness. When he was seeking treatment, he came under the influence of a psychiatrist who told him that all his problems stemmed from his wife, his mother, and from his religious upbringing. <laughs> My father not only left my mother, he also left our faith so that he could live a promiscuous and hedonistic lifestyle. So, to fast forward to my awareness of looming, I knew I had to not only pass my faith forward to my children, I also had to pass my faith backwards to my father. I began by praying for the reconversion of my father. I began by praying novenas to St. Teresa of Lisieux, known as the Little Father. The word novena is from the Latin word novo, meaning nine. A novena prayer is a prayer prayed for a special intention for nine days. Recall in the nine days that the Apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary spent in prayer between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost Sunday. Novenas are not a magic way of getting God to do what you want. Instead, it's a way to pray in submission to God's will. Why did I pray in Novena to St. Teresa? I chose her because she had chosen me. On my Garcia weekend, I was assigned to the table of St. Teresa. While sitting at the table, I began to smell flowers. What was that? I leaned to the right and to the left. I even smelled myself to see if I could smell somebody. Where did it come from? I asked Adrian Alsobro, the team member, at my table. She said, often St. Teresa lets her presence be known by the scent of flowers. <clears throat> wow. So, after my Priscilla weekend, I read the story of soul by St. Teresa. In it, she wrote, the little child will strew flowers. She will perfume the royal throne with their sweet scents, and she will sing in her silvery tones the canticle of love. I wanted my father to feel this love. But when he left the Catholic Church, he became an atheist. We lived in different states, 
and on my visits to him, he would tell me, there is no God. End of discussion. Soon there was another end. My father insisted that my mentally handicapped sister Beverly live alone in New Orleans. My sister's brothers and I went along with the plan because he said that she would be monitored by a social worker. One day, two of my sisters found Beverly, dirty and hungry, as she was wandering around the streetcars on St. Charles Avenue. When they returned to her apartment, they found that she was not being monitored, and there was no food. What should we do? The only answer was to confront my father, but with this decision, there was a risk factor. If he refused, we would have to intercede on Beverly's behalf. And we could be disinherited. My father was a wealthy man. We told him that Beverly needed supervision. He disagreed. He even said she needed to live alone so that she could have a promiscuous lifestyle like his. My father had crossed the line, and we became disinherited. I guess you could say that at this point, we became parentless, since my mother had died two years earlier. We were now responsible for Beverly. But, as would be expected, we were upset that our father had disowned us. What could we do? We thought about suing him and his psychiatrist. <laughs> changed his 
mind about what he believed. He went from being an atheist to being an agnostic. <laughs> fasting 
all day at work. I thought of the verse, some things only come about through prayer and fasting, Mark 9, 29. Then my sister Karen called to tell me that our dad's brother, Uncle Edwin, said dad has to see a priest before he dies because of his healing as a baby from infant paralysis. From what we have heard, my grandmother visited the dispoused Carmelites in New Orleans for prayer and was advised to consecrate my dad through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, rub him daily with holy oil, and clothe him in a scapula. <coughs> After a year, he was healed. In Thanksgiving, my grandmother had my dad wear a scapula and dressed him all in white till he was seven years old. <laughs> Twelve days later, on March the 15th, 
15, he died peacefully. A few days later, he had a full Catholic Mass with Father Dennis Hayes presiding. The readings of the Mass included my mother's favorite verse, All things work for good for those who love the Lord. And of course, the Gospel was from Matthew 7, 7. The verse I had prayed in the efficacious novena to the sacred heart of Jesus only 23 days before. Ask, seek, knock. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. After my dad's death, I noticed a book on my bookshelf and read about St. Teresa's father. Louis Martin, an ideal father. I knew then that St. Teresa was still reaching out to me. And even though I did not have an ideal father on earth like she did, I am hopeful that my dad is in heaven singing, singing the canticle of love that the little father spoke of. The answer to my prayer from years ago when I reached backwards to my dad to let him know of God's compassion and love. I am continually amazed by God's love. And I am humbled at how God has used me. Yes, me. I am still too tall with curly hair and big glasses. But I'm no longer too skinny. <laughs> So, what are you waiting for? Just open.